February 29th or 28th in non-leap years, St. Oswald, Archbishop of York. Oswald was of a noble Saxon family. He was endowed with a very rare and handsome appearance and with a singular piety of soul. Brought up by his uncle, St. Odo, Archbishop of Canterbury, he was chosen, while still young, as dean of the secular canons of Winchester, which at that time was very lax. His attempt to reform them was a failure, and he saw, with that infallible instinct which so often guides the saints in critical times, that the true remedy for the corruption of the clergy was the restoration of the monastic life he therefore went to france and took the habit of st benedict when he returned to england it was to receive the news of odo's death he found however a new patron in st dunstan through whose influence he was nominated to the see of worcester to these two saints together with ethelwold of winchester the monastic revival of the tenth century is mainly due oswald's first care was to remove all benefits from disorderly secular clerics whom he replaced as far as possible by religious priests he himself founded seven religious houses considering that in the hearts of the secular canons of winchester there were yet some sparks of virtue he would not at once dismiss them but rather form them through a holy artifice adjoining their cathedral church he built a chapel in honor of the mother of god causing it to be served by a body of strict religious he himself assisted at the divine office there and his example was followed by the people the canons finding themselves isolated and the church deserted chose rather to embrace the religious life than continue to injure their own souls and be also a mockery to their people through the contrast offered by their worldliness and the regularity of their religious brethren later as archbishop of york st oswald met a like success in his efforts god manifested his approval of zeal by discovering to him the relics of his great predecessor at worcester st willifried which he reverently translated to the church of that city he died while washing the feet of the poor as he did daily during lent on february twenty ninth in the year nine ninety two a soul without discipline is like a ship without a helm it must inevitably strike unawares upon the rocks founder on the shoals or float unawares into the harbor of the enemy